Authentic leadership is still a relatively new and under-researched leadership topic. It first came to wide public attention with the book Why Should Anyone Be Led By You? by British academics Rob Goffey and Gareth Jones. However, its roots go far deeper. Authenticity has been a recurring theme in philosophy since classical times. So it is perhaps a little surprising that it took until 2003 for the idea of authentic leadership to emerge. But emerge it did. From US business person and later academic Bill George. His book was called Authentic Leadership Rediscovering the Secrets to creating lasting value. In it, he sought to create a hard reset on the leadership styles that, in his mind, had led to the dot-com boom and its later failure, and failures like the collapse of Enron. He followed that book in 2008 with an even more successful book, Discover Your True North, Becoming an Authentic Leader. But it was Goffey and Jones who brought the idea of authentic leadership to leaders at all levels. Their second book was titled Why Should Anyone Be Led By You? And they tracked the idea of authenticity back to classical times and the Delphic injunction to first know yourself. However, as is often the case, there is one writer who said it best. This above all, to thine own self be true, and it must follow, as the night the day thou canst not be false to any man. That was the advice that Polonius gives to his son Laertes in Hamlet by William Shakespeare. I think this means that leadership can be an act, a mask that leaders wear. They behave in the ways that they think leaders ought to behave, rather than as themselves. This can lead to leaders who fail when their followers see through their mask and lose their confidence in the leadership. Goffey and Jones struck a chord. Their book came at the right time and they articulated their ideas in a compelling way. They argued that too many companies are led in too technocratic a way, and they're led by people who act as bureaucrats and managers, rather than forging connections with the people who do the work. And those leaders often lack self-awareness about their own shortcomings. Instead, they argued, Real leaders are confident in who they are and what they stand for. They're not afraid to put their real personality on show, to act with integrity and to display the values that they espouse. They can communicate well whilst remaining true to themselves and coping to adapt to the changing realities of their situations. As a result, they can inspire people to extraordinary levels of commitment. So what is authentic leadership? Well, the way I see it, authentic leaders are characterised by two things above anything else. Firstly, they understand themselves. They know who they are, what they stand for, what they're good at and what they're not so good at, what they believe in, their values and their goals. And secondly, authentic leaders act in a way that is entirely consistent with their true selves. The person we see in the public arena is entirely consistent with a real person on the inside. It is also important that authentic leaders act ethically. It is not acceptable for someone to say, I'm a bad person, I know I'm a bad person, and so by acting in bad ways, I'm being authentic. This may be authenticity in a dictionary sense, 
but to me it has no place in a modern organisation. Let's leave that style to the world of crime or politics. In addition to this, authentic leaders are committed to a number of things. Self-reflection, becoming more self-aware, learning from their experiences and understanding how those experiences are shaping them. And as a result, self-development, continuous learning and growth. Discipline and diligence, doing the right things and doing them right. Integrity, honesty, openness and transparency and developing and then living by a set of values. And finally, building open, equitable and respectful relationships with the people around them, their peers and their followers. The main value of authentic leadership is your ability to win the trust and to maintain the trust of the people around you. But there is another hidden value of authenticity. Because the simple fact is, inauthenticity hurts. It hurts your organisation and it hurts you. This is not just because people will cease to trust you if you behave inauthentically, although they most certainly will. Inauthenticity hurts you emotionally. Soren Kierkegaard said, being your true self is the opposite of despair. He saw authenticity as a route away from despair, away from angst. Another philosopher, Martin Heidegger, said that when we commit to a journey from inauthenticity to authenticity, we start to live for ourselves. So, how do we become authentic leaders? First, you need to learn about yourself. Reflect on your experiences. Understand what you can learn from them and discover who you really are. Second, accept yourself. Make a careful assessment of your strengths and your weaknesses. But accept them as a snapshot. Adopt a growth mindset that says, tomorrow I can be someone different from the person I am today. I can enhance my strengths and I can address my weaknesses. Third, understand your motivations. Is what you're planning to do driven by noble or ignoble motives? You may do some things out of self-interest, which is fine. But always own up to that to yourself. Don't pretend that everything you do is for other people if it's not. Number four, accept other people. Take people as you find them. You can't change other people. So find ways to work with them as they are. And number five, look for feedback. Find out how other people see you and the things you do. Understand their perceptions and then use those to help you craft a better way of operating. And number six, open yourself up to learning from your mistakes. You will make loads of mistakes. And modern research suggests that actually we learn more effectively from our mistakes than we do from our successes. So welcome those mistakes as opportunities, as gifts to learn from. Number seven, be thoughtful. Make time to consider and reflect on your decisions before you make them and also to reflect on your experiences after you've had them. Number eight, Understand your leadership style. Discover what kind of leadership style or styles come naturally to you. And also understand your workplace situations and the people you lead. Then adopt leadership styles that fit the situation, but that are authentic to who you are. Flexibility is not inauthenticity. 
when it comes from a desire to adapt properly to the situation you find. Being flexible in your leadership style is the best way to make connections with your team and get the results you need. Number nine, adopt a non-hostile sense of humour. Humour is a good thing in the workplace as long as it doesn't threaten or undermine the people around you or any one person. As my mum used to say, if you can't say anything nice, you don't say anything at all. And number 10, express your emotions freely and clearly. This can be hard. It can take a lot of work and it can be countercultural for many people. But it starts with not lying about the way you feel. Authenticity is a matter of character. It goes beyond walking the walk. It's deep in your bones, in your soul. You need a realistic perception of every situation and how you fit into them. So listen to other people's ideas and assessments and challenge your own ideas, beliefs and assumptions. Let's end with a short assessment of authentic leadership. How good is it? Because some people would argue that we don't need authentic leaders, but we need leaders who are actually better than just themselves. And leadership is a journey. It takes a lot of learning. And so we need to sometimes fake it until we make it. But maybe there's an alternative. Maybe as an authentic leader, we should simply show up not as someone else, not as something more than who we are, but as our very best self. This is, after all, what authentic leadership is. It's being your best self all the time. A strong leader who is always true to themselves will win the trust and the connection with their followers and will always get more from them as a result. And maybe understanding your own flaws will make an authentic leader better, faster than an inauthentic leader will learn just by taking the knocks. Please do give this video a like if you've enjoyed it or learned from it. I'll be making loads more great management courses videos for you, so please do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you don't miss any of them. I look forward to seeing you in the next video, and in the meantime, keep learning.